Now let's get going folks and we'll begin like we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid Monologue. Tax policy can be complicated and dry and not very interesting unless of course one stumbles upon a company that finds a loophole in tax policy so large that it can both screw his competition and taxpayers at the very same time. Case in point, as reported on this show a few months ago, Ravinder Minhas, president and co-owner of Calgary-based Minhas Craft Brewery, receives a sweet $6 million annual tax subsidy under Alberta's tragically flawed small brewer tax program. You see, the program was meant to usher in a brewing environment that would allow for local craft breweries to flourish. Incredibly, the precise opposite has occurred. Here's the deal. While Minhas is Calgary based on paper, in reality, about 95% of his beer isn't brewed in Alberta. Heck, it's not even brewed in Canada, folks. Rather, it is shipped in from the state of Wisconsin. That means Alberta taxpayers are propping up a beer company that is Canadian in name only. Indeed, I wonder how average Albertans feel about the fact that their tax dollars are going towards propping up American brewing jobs. Incidentally, a little recent investigative work by this network has uncovered that Minhas also runs a company by the name of Global Distillers SRL. Do a search of Global Distillers and it turns out that it is based in that great Canadian territory known as <laughs> the Barbados. In fact, it turns out that all of Minhas's trademarks are registered to a Barbados-based company. And it gets worse, folks. One of the managers of Global Distillers SRL listed in the Barbados filing is Akash Ragbir, general manager of Banks Brewery. Banks is a huge multinational brewery selling beer in Barbados, US, UK, and Canada, and is a subsidiary of Banks Holdings. Can you say conflict of interest? Can you say shell game? Indeed, such a company set up is clearly in violation of the wishes of the provincial regulator, the Alberta Liquor and Gaming Commission. In a policy letter dating back some seven years ago, the LGC sets out perimeters for owning, building, or leasing a brewery in Alberta, and the policy states, quote, the intent of the amended beer markup policy is to recognize and compensate for the smaller economy of scale exper experienced by legitimate small brewer brewery manufacturers. Any transaction, filing, or corporate structure intended to circumvent, transfer benefit to another party, or take advantage of this intent is prohibited and nullifies the applicant from receiving the small brewer's markup rate. That's government speak for tax subsidy. So although Mr. Minhas portrays himself as the victimized underdog railing against foreign-owned breweries such as Molson and Labatt, to see Ravinder wrap himself in the Canadian flag is a bit much. But here's the good news. The party may be over for Ravinder. You see, most of Alberta's small breweries are lobbying the government to change the regulations so that only small Alberta-based breweries get tax breaks. Imagine that, folks. Alberta tax breaks benefiting Albertans and Albertan companies as opposed to Americans. Who would have thunk it? Indeed, one of the perverse ironies of the Alberta beer biz is this. While the Wild Rose province produces more malting barley than any other jurisdiction in all of North America, the number of Alberta-based breweries is pathetically small, about a dozen. And that is a number that has remained stagnant for decades despite government intervention to grow this sector. After all, giving a shot in the arm to independent brewery, brewers was the rationale behind the tax subsidies in the first place. The idea was that small craft breweries brewing world-class lagers and ales would be enticed to set up shop in Alberta. But the biggest beneficiary by far is Minhas, which until earlier this year didn't even brew a single millimeter of suds in Alberta. As well, don't let the craft brewery part of the Minhas name fool you. Minhas specializes in so-called mass-produced value brands. Translation, according to numerous beer enthusiast websites, the Minhas product is just cheap plonk. Little wonder small breweries are crying out for reform. Recently delivering a letter to Alberta's Deputy Premier, Thomas Lukasik, 
signed by the majority of the province's craft brewers. Surprise, surprise, one signature that was conspicuously absent from the letter was that of Ravinder Minhas, Alberta's subsidized $6 million man. And little wonder, take away that $6 million bucks, and Minhouse is upside down in the balance sheet. In the meantime, Minhouse is actively lobbying the Alberta government to maintain or change the rules to suit him. Apparently, not only is Minhouse a foreign-owned entity, but it is one that has become addicted to provincial funding. Incidentally, based on current output, Minhouse isn't so little anymore. This so-called craft brewery is actually the 14th largest brewer in the U.S., some of Ravinder's efforts to curry favor have been downright embarrassing, folks. Check out this bizarre poster campaign for liquor brands that are produced by Minhas. Check out that as part of the advertising copy, the logo of the Progressive Conservative Party of Alberta takes prominence. I don't think it's on the uh, monitor right now, but we'll try to get it for you before it ends. Can you imagine if the likes of Molson produced a poster campaign in which the images of Canadian or export were positioned besides, say, a portrait of Prime Minister Harper? I mean, how utterly bizarre. But it looks like the gig is up. The Deputy Premier recently informed me that there will be changes to the policy, and the, the policy will be either rewritten to prevent abuses or scrapped entirely, thereby allowing the free market to pick winners and losers, not government. After all, in hindsight, perhaps the Alberta government had good intentions with its small brewery subsidy program, but we all know what the building blocks are when it comes to paving that road to hell. Indeed, I recently spoke to Kevin Wood, who heads up Drummond Brewing, which is an Alberta brewer that is actually based in Alberta, if you can imagine. He told me if the status quo is maintained in terms of an unlevel playing field in Alberta, Drummond might have to shut down their Red Deer Brewery and instead set up shop in Montana. This would dramatically lower their production costs, such as labor and they have lower taxes. And by shipping the finished product into Wild Rose country, Drummond would still get the same markup rate as it does now. By the way, it should also be noted that Guelph, Ontario-based Sleeman Brewing was going to set up a brewery in Alberta recently until it became evident that doing so would also put them at a competitive disadvantage. So it was that the plans for a new Sleeman brewery there were scrapped. Again, how sad that a government policy meant to enrich an industry is instead stifling that sector and growing jobs elsewhere. It is now up to the Alberta Tories to do the right thing, namely follow through on their pronouncement that they will change or scrap a program that allows a producer of cheap U.S. plonk to have his product subsidized by taxpayers while homegrown competition withers or looks at relocating out of the province. Because as the program exists now, folks, it's enough to drive a teetotaler taxpayer to drink. And that's the Menzoid Monologue.